All right, welcome to Learn SDR with Prof. Jason. Today we're going to talk about frequency locked loops. And let me just remind you where we left off last time. I'm going to share my, my screen and play the flow graph that we had last time, exercising the constellation modulator. And let me remind you that if you're transmitting binary phase shift keying and there are two different levels, if you have a random source of bits that are either zero or one, you need to pack them into a byte and you need to pack one bit into each, into each byte. If you have a quadrature phase shift keying signal, QPSK, you're, you're generate, you have to generate random numbers from zero to four, but you still have to pack, uh, you can pack those two chunks into, into a byte. And that's, that's what you're actually transmitting. The other way to do it, which is what I have shown here, is just to have a random uniform source. Now, the way I've done that is I've just looked up how many bits per symbol are in the constellation or uh, what the arity, this is just the number of different symbols there are in the constellation. So I've just used Python to, to call those functions so I don't have to change them every time and remember that I've changed them. So just keep that in mind. So I'll go back to binary phase shift keying, which was the example that we were mostly working with. And let me play this flow graph and show you some deficiencies of our received chain. So we're sending a binary phase shift keyed signal. And what we're sending is all real component and no imaginary component. Its transmit spectrum looks something like this. I've given it uh, excess bandwidth of, I think, 0.5. Yep, 0.5. And when I receive it on the receiver, I just have to make sure I have a reasonable level. I could, I could up the gain a bit uh, as long as uh, I'm staying below one. Now, what we're receiving is, is a bit of a a bit of a mess. We're not, we're not getting just a real part. We're getting a real part and an imaginary part. Now, what I showed you last time was by hand in the flow graph, and let me move this over and show you where this is happening. I'm taking what's coming out of the RTL-SDR and I'm multiplying it by a complex exponential that I'm generating at hopefully the opposite of whatever the offset is. And I put the offset on a slider. Let me go back to the flow graph here. And as I slide the offset back and forth, I should see eventually the, the signal will look a little bit more like it's either all in real or all in imaginary. And I can never get it perfect with just a slider, plus it'll move around a little bit, but that's, that's pretty good. So for a while, it's all real, and then it's all imaginary, and then it sloshes back to being all real. Um, but this is the frequency offset that I'm manually correcting in order to get my binary phase shift keyed signal to be mostly in one phase and not the other. And you can see that the frequency spectrum, I'm plotting the blue, which is just the raw, raw signal coming out of the receiver, and the red, which has been automatic gain controlled. So its, it's level has been uh, lifted to be roughly plus one and minus one on average. But I've also shifted it with this offset here. And then I showed you last time, if I pass that through a second root raised cosine filter, I get really nice pulses with eye diagrams that open and close. And if I pause one of these things, if I get it right, there's pretty clear points uh, about where, where I should sample. So we're going to do several things. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to automate this slider. So in order to automate the slider, we're going to use something called a frequency lock loop. And I'm going to describe what that, what that does on the board. So I'll describe it as, as spectra. So imagine that you have a, a spectrum that you're receiving, and the goal is to have it centered around 0. Let's say it's not quite centered around 0. There's, there's some offset. And in my case, the offset was a little bit negative. So the spectrum was maybe looked like that. And there's some frequency shift such that it's not centered around 0. Now, and what I want is I want a spectrum that is, in fact, centered around 0. There's my 0. And so to achieve that by, by hand, what I did was I multiplied by a complex exponential of the right frequency offset, just kind of by eye, to shift this thing over. Now, we want to automate that process. And the way that process is automated is to take the incoming signal and do what's called a band edge filter on it. And what a band edge filter does is it looks 
at just the place where the spectrum is falling off. Or so let me let me just say what the I'll do it on this example of where the where the ideal spectrum is, and I'll kind of smooth smooth these out just a little bit. Give myself some room here. So imagine we have we have an ideal signal, and imagine I look just at the band edges, and I make I make a filter that gives me a positive weight for the band edge around here. So it has a little, uh, well, let's see, I, I wanna, let me back up. I wanna make a filter that will give me an estimate of how far this is shifted, an estimate of the error. So let me make a signal that, uh, oh, and the way we're gonna do this, and let me draw a little schematic picture, is like a, an old fashioned uh, balance scale. So you can imagine there's a, there's a pivot and two plates. And if you put more weight on one plate, it'll come down. And if you put equal weights on both plates, the scale will balance. And so what, what do we want to, to be the weight on the plates? Well, we want the weight on the plates to be a filter that is sensitive just to these edges here. So say it, it turns on and peaks right at the edge and then falls off a little bit past the edge. And a filter that peaks right at this edge, right, right at the, the middle of this edge, but has a negative weight to it. So, and it falls off at the edge. So this is all in, in, uh, in as a function of frequency. This is all a function of frequency, function of frequency. And what we'll do is this is all written in, in terms of a frequency spectrum, but there's two ways of doing this. One way is to compute this, the spectrum of your original signal, multiply it by this filter with these weights, positive and negative. And you can see that if we multiply this spectrum by these weights and then add up all the area, we'll get much more negative stuff than positive stuff. And so we know we're too low for, for this, uh, for this incoming spectrum. So we know we'll want to shift, shift it up. And if we multiplied the correct spectrum by this, and this should be symmetric, I'm not great at drawing. If we multiply the correct spectrum by this, um, there'll be equal amounts of stuff in the positive edge as, as in the negative edge here. And so uh, the scales will be balanced and we won't nudge our, our complex exponential correction factor one way or the other. So that's how we estimate the error and then how we nudge the, the complex exponential around. Now, with signal processing, you don't have to actually take a frequency spectrum and multiply by this, this shape. You could turn this all into an operation that happens just in the time domain as a filter. So if you were to compute a filter whose frequency response looked like this with a little positive hump uh, around where the the band edge should be falling off, a little negative hump where the band edge should be coming on, uh, then all you would have to do is take your incoming signal and filter it with, with that particular filter shape and then really smooth out what's coming out of that filter. So any given little piece of data will, have, will be fluctuating back and forth. It'll have a little bit of uh, high frequency stuff, a little bit of low frequency stuff. But what the filter picks out is kind of high frequency stuff at the, at the positive edge and high frequency stuff at the low, low edge and uh, subtracts those two to calculate an estimate for how far you're off. And then after you've smoothed out that error signal, you can take that smoothed out error signal and nudge your complex exponential correction up or down a little bit. So, so let's actually see how that works. And I'll share my screen again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just add the block that does this and look at what comes out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add the frequency lock loop block. So if I do a control F for frequency lock loop, FLL, something called a frequency lock loop band edge. That looks promising. So I'll add that down here. I'll take the output of my automatic gain control. So the, my uh, sort of already made the average level uh, plus or minus one. I'll, and what I'll do is I will, instead of plotting the, uh, 
the root raised cosine filter version of this, I'll plot instead the root raised cosine filter of what comes out. So this, this does the whole process of calculating that uh, which way the scales tip and also correcting with, with a version of this uh, with a version of this complex exponential. So the tricky part here is getting some of the parameters right. So the things it needs to know are the samples per symbol. So it basically needs to construct this band edge filter. So it needs to know things like the samples per symbol. Uh, the filter roll-off factor is just our alpha, our excess gain parameter. Um, the prototype filter size, this is something that there's a little bit of flexibility on here, but uh, I've seen it often given as something like samples per symbol times two plus one. So it's not, not a huge filter compared to some of the others. And then the loop bandwidth. So this is how, how much that error signal gets smoothed out as it's calculated sample by sample by sample. And uh, I could go into some of the mathematical theory behind phase lock loops to determine what, what parameters are good or what parameters aren't. But let's at least start with two times math.pi um, divided by the samples per symbol divided by 100. So here's a reasonable, a reasonable loop bandwidth. And I'll show you what happens when we change this loop bandwidth. Uh, OK, so what, what's the last thing I want to do? I might also want to just show the frequency of this. So let me add, add on a uh, third input here. And in my configuration, I'll have my first one be just the raw received. My second one be uh, a signal that I have tuned around manually, which we can eventually get rid of if this is working properly. And then finally, the third one will be the received phase locked loop band edge, uh, you know, what's coming after the received uh, FLL band edge filter and correction factor. So I th think that will work if I connect this up. All right, so let's let's take a look at that. So I'm still transmitting my same signal. And let me bump up my gain a tiny bit. All right, so now the important plot to look at is here. My raw received signal is in blue, hasn't been automatically gain corrected, so it's a little bit low. Uh, my the one that I tuned by hand is in red. And right now, my offset parameter that I'm tuning by hand is zero. So it's just a, a raised version of the blue. And it looks like in green, the FLL bandage has properly centered the, the signal. And you can see what comes out now after the second R, uh, root raised cosine filter is pretty good. You can, you can already see the kind of slower sloshing around between real and imaginary parts for this uh, for this binary phase shift keyed signal. I don't have to do any manual tuning. My manual tuning offset is set to zero. So let's see what happens if I, if I actually do tune off a little bit. So if I tune off, I can get pretty high. Uh, well, actually, I'm tuning it to be better. Let me make it worse and worse and worse, worse and worse and worse. Uh, I'm, my red signal, which is the one that I'm controlling here, is getting worse and worse and worse. And the green is basically staying still. So if I slide this back and forth, the green is staying pretty still, even though I'm manually tuning it up to be pretty far off. Let me go even farther. Let me show you what happens if I increase the range of this, uh, of this offset uh, to be much, much bigger. I think the smallest I can make it is something like uh, 500 would be the theoretical smallest, but then I'll have some wrapping. Let's do that. So let's see how far off I can get before I it loses lock. So let me show it here. So this is the uh, what comes out of the automatic gain control unit. This is just a, a tuned version where I can control it with this offset. And I'm going to slide it up and down and see that even down here, I'm completely off of where I should be. And it still managed to, to catch it. Now, if I go a little bit too far, what happens is it actually pulls the the green signal with me. So uh, you, need to, you need to be roughly in the right ballpark, right? You need to be on the right, uh, on the right channel. And the reason is that the, the loops here, 
don't allow a frequency offset bigger than basically the signal bandwidth. So why is that? Well, let me go back to kind of a reasonable offset. So say your hardware offset was, was kind of like that. Uh, maybe more like that. Your hardware offset was, was this red and you need to shift it over to be green. So here, one of the scales is being completely pushed down on and the other scale is not. Uh, but uh, we're, we're still pretty good here. Imagine though, if you had an adjacent signal that was over here, right? you, you wouldn't want the frequency lock loop to pick up on that. And so basically, or, you know, or over here, you, you sort of need your, your hardware or some sort of manual tuning like I'm doing in red to be roughly right, to get you in the right ballpark so that you're not in, in some adjacent channel. And adjacent channels will slightly nudge you around a little bit. You're never going to be perfect. Uh, but uh, the, the filter itself should, should be pretty, pretty robust to, to quite a range of uh, different inputs here. And it'll always give you a signal where, yes, there is still some, some phase offset, which you can see here. You know, over the course of uh, eight milliseconds here, you go through maybe one period of, of, uh, of cosine. So I'm still, even after this, I'm still off by you know, one, one cycle every eight milliseconds. But that's, that's much better than where we started with. And the I diagrams here, which I'll talk about next, uh, look pretty good no matter what offset I made. So this is, this is a way to automatically correct for hardware offset. And I could even bypass my multiply block. So I can even get rid of my manual tuning and just directly put my, uh, my RTL SDR source into my automatic gain control that then goes into my band edge filter. And this, this is the same as having multiplied by no frequency offset. So it will pick up on, uh, on the frequency offset and tune it to be pretty close. So let me pause it. You can see that you know, there are places here where you can really pick out the 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So you can sort of see the data here. Now, in order to really recover the BPSK, we would like to do two more things. And one is to get rid of this final phase offset, which is slowly rotating. And you might think that that happens next, but that actually happens after we do the timing recovery. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. And the timing recovery is finding the right sample here, where to, where to pick in this, in this eye diagram, where you're right on, on the, the middle of the symbol. OK. That was that. It was a kind of relatively short one. The next one's going to be a little bit more complicated. I really blew past all the signal processing about how do you actually form a filter in the time domain that has that response. But you know, it's basically, and and what? Yeah, you know, I just sort of drew little humps. But there's some nice nice mathematical forms of those humps that people have thought about. Kind of, I didn't mention that, but uh, as long as it knows about the alpha parameter. Uh, that block can pick out the right, the right uh, humps that just, just capture where that edge is happening, where it's most sensitive to slight, slight shifts either way.